Fielded about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. And let's see. The box with six DB, so a dime set here on third down. They'll set up to throw. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. He couldn't get away there third down the pressure too much and he's sacked for a loss of 12. Boy he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. So possession goes over here on the punt and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now the Colts defensive unit trots back out there. And they've got the lead. Last time they surrendered the field goal. We'll see what they do this go around. And giving up three is never ideal because any defense wants to pitch a shutout. But that's not a bad thing in most situations. You only give up field goals, your team has a chance to win. Yeah, and they still, as I said, they've got the lead here. We'll see if they can get a stop and hold them to zero points this time. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Give it to him right up the gun. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Another pistol look here. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Just a two-yard pickup, and that should necessitate a call for the punt team here on fourth down. Partner, that's another short run there, and I think the easy thing is to look at him right now and say, let's get away from him entirely. Let's start throwing the football. But I don't think you ever entirely abandon the run. It helps set a tone for the game for you, keeps your offensive linemen feeling good about themselves, and it actually tamps down a defense's pressure because if you just throw it all the time, it's going to tee off with the pass rush. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They go play action here on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Okay, when the big guy runs a corner route, you're asking a lot, no matter who's covering him. Doesn't matter whether it's a linebacker or a defensive back. Yeah. He usually has the advantage because of his body type. So here we go, first and ten now. And he'll give it here to his running back. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And Brandon, every running back wants to use their speed in order to get out in front of things. Sometimes you just have to be patient, let blocks develop. On that play, that didn't happen. They come up in an offset eye. Back 
to throw now on second and ten. He's got time. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. He's got a man that's caught left sideline. He got 29 yards that time. So they're able to connect and beat the man coverage. Nice job between the two of them. One getting downfield, the other one delivering. And now a first down following that long game. And to give this time to the tailback. And a solid run down inside the 30. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Now the offense lining up first and 10. All right, here we go. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They come out here in the eye. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. They'll drop the throw. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. they will bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And now the Buccaneers offense gets set to head back onto the field. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Partner, that defensive win reminds me of something a coach of mine used to say all the time. If you really want it, you'll find a way to go get it. And the defense did exactly that. a short one here complete to the tight end they'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down two yards to go here on third down they come up in an empty set four wide receivers one tight end 
They'll go to the air here on third and two. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's got enough for the first to cross midfield to the 48. A good pick up there at 20 yards. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. And on the ground they go with a running back. He takes it down to the 42, a five-yard run. Ah, uh, yes, this is where the expression staying ahead of the chains comes into play. Good runs like that one set you up well for third down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. This guy carrying the ball, your eyes are going to direct your feet, and you're hoping they carry you to the open spaces. But it's awfully difficult at times because you have so many things you have to look out for. Where's the line blocking? Where's the traffic coming from? Tough to find open spots. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. He's been terrific so far. Snap to the up man, and the gamble pays off. They get the first, call it a pickup of seven. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. So they snap it straight to the up man. What's his responsibility? Normally, obviously, just to protect, but he's got to be a guy that can be pretty agile too, right? Yeah, without a doubt, because you're talking about a guy, even in protection, he may have to slide up and down the line of scrimmage to pick up someone who comes through trying to block a punt. So you know he's got that ability to move. But oftentimes, it's a usual running back, a fullback, someone who's used to having the ball in their hands, and he's able to pick up the first down. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it. But don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. Back to throw. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. They'll look to throw here on first down. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. Well, after what we just saw, we know that with third down coming up, this is not a gimme for the offense. They've got to figure out what they want to do. Do they challenge the offensive line and try and run it? Or do they go ahead and concede that this is a tough defense to put in the air? One quarter remains here in week 16. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. A great play there. Touchdown number 15 of the year. And the Bucs have taken the lead here in the fourth. And Charles, he's able to dive in there in a short yardage situation. Just find a place to get to the end zone. Didn't matter where it was, but once he did, used his nose for the end zone and dove in. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. The Bucs ready for the kickoff, and here we go. It's in the air. This one fielded at the five. 
And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And the Colts getting ready to go. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blow. It's the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, yeah, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Second down now after the pass completion. the gun they'll look to throw looking middle and that's complete and he gets this one just shy of the 40 they'll mark him down at the 39 there were a couple holes there partner was that zone coverage it's exactly what it was brandon when you see man to man that defender runs with the receiver in this case they were just taking care of their zone coverages their responsibilities on the field and the offense found the open space so the offense has it first and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Try and set up the screen. It's complete. So the screen good for only two. Now it's third down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. Out of the gun now on third down. He's got time in the pocket. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. <laughs> Whoosh. That one goes for 36 yards. A lot of time in the pocket there, and the quarterback able to find an open throwing lane, and he delivered. What a terrific job by the guys up front, able to tamp down the pass rush that they've been getting all day. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a play fake here on first down. His throw caught at about the five. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver with his 19th touchdown, his second of the game. And the Colts have taken the lead here in the fourth. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24 yard line. So out come the Bucks now. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the ball. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. 
fresh set of downs here. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Green 39! Green 39! They go play action here on first down. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here we go now. Three, two, three. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Looking to throw. And that is incomplete. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Oh no, he lost the football! On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback, the ball gets away from him, Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Indianapolis set to take the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them, they feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. He's going to fire this, and that's caught inside the 30. A huge play that time for the Colts. 54 yards. And he is picking up right where he left off a week ago. I wrote down, so funny here on my notes, what he said last week. And after we talked about the good game, he said, I will do it again. And I wrote those words down, <laughs> and he's done it again. And it's not bragging if, you, if you're doing it, right? Because that's exactly what he's told you. And he is getting it done smooth in the secondary, making catches, making plays. That's the guy that we know. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. And defensively going with a dime set, six DBs on third and four. Back to throw here. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. In the red zone this time. Let's go! 319! 
from the red zone now. They'll look to throw. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Second down following the incompletion. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. That's pulled in at the 32. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. <laughs> now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. He's got his man on the crossing route. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, it's obvious to me that the big guy is beyond locked in. We saw last week a scintillating performance. We're seeing it again. I think he and his coordinator are in lockstep right now. Sometimes a tip of the cap to the guys calling the plays here, yeah? Not just calling the plays, setting the game plan, sitting with him during the week, watching tape as they formulate it. You know, the best ones, they listen to their guy and say, okay, what do you like this week? You like this play? You don't like that play? And that helps them formulate what they're going to do. He'll look to throw. Incomplete. And they got to get to the 23 here on third. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Time running out here on the play clock. And they're going to fake it. He wants to throw it here. And all the gamble fails. It's incomplete. I remember being taught that cliches have become so for a reason. A lot of times they're true, right? What's that they used to tell us about letting sleeping dogs lie? Well, this one wasn't sleeping. Maybe it was just slumbering a little bit. But taking that gamble there, you've got the lead. You may have ignited them now that they stopped you. That's exactly right. If you take the points here, right, here you don't shift momentum necessarily on that play. You probably just did. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And he will find his man on the outside. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Here we go now. What's in that party? Party. Now on 
first down. He'll drop to throw it. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. Go, oh, here we go. 319. 319. Back to that Philly. Here we go. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. Not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I think you've been overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. A good play on the ball, getting a hand on it, but it was tipped up in the air before falling incomplete. And that leads to way too many moments where bad things can happen for a defense and good things can happen for an offense. And this is tough to teach in today's football because Everyone wants to make the highlight play. Tip it up in the air, grab it yourself, take it the other way. But sometimes that can backfire. How do you teach these guys to just make the good, solid, fundamental play of knocking it to the ground and not trying to make a highlight real play that could backfire? And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They have the lead, still a one-possession game, but the defense got the stop. They've got the football now. Just salted away, right? Exactly. That's all the defense is counting on. And now the Bucs deciding to take a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Second down following the run. They come out here in the eye. And they'll go on the ground. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. And the Buccaneers go ahead and take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. They'll give it to him right up the gut. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Now hang on here. Timeout called. Timeout called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. That's taken on the 25. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Back to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. So here we go, first and 10 now. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he's brought down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. And they're going to speed things up here. 
He's back to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he's brought down. Give him 18 on that one. And that'll be good enough for a Tampa Bay first down. And with the clock ticking under 50 seconds now, he spikes it. And on second and 10 now. to throw. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. They'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. All right, here we go. Well, that's Three, certainly nine, playing eight. down a distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it is what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for Indianapolis, they continue to rack up the victories as this one moves them to 13-2 and two on the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. Meanwhile, for the Bucs, they hit double digits in losses as they fall to 5-10. and 10. And they'll try to rebound next week on the road in Nashville. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. So long, everybody.